talk to students. Housing horrors. It begins now. Let's go. My name's uh, Jo Jeffries and this is my colleague Catherine Fitzgerald and we're the advice service here at the university. I would say think about it before you uh, rush into things. A friend of mine recently moved into a house with a bunch of course friends and she's kind of regretting it now that she's rushed into it. Hi guys, this is for you to remember, right? Housing Horrors, what it's about, it's about what to look for in a house, any problems you might have, so you know yourselves what to look out for. Make sure that you do not rush to go and find accommodation. You've got plenty of time. In January and February times, that's when the housing fair will be coming along. That's when you can go out, look for yourselves. But remember, the people in the houses now, look out for what people are saying right now. Listen to your fellow students, you know? They're here to support you. You know, just like the student union is here to support you, the students as well, they're here to support you. So remember, don't rush to make a decision. This is just advice. So yeah, keep watching. A lot of people might decide that they want to actually go back and live at home and, and commute, or maybe live with a family friend here in Lincoln, or, um, or become a lodger. Um, uh, the pros to that is it can be cheap and sometimes even free. Um, it can be a very supporting living environment for you and um, it's also very much easier for you to leave if you don't like it. Um, but uh, some of the cons are it, you don't get so much freedom, especially if you're living at home. Um, your legal status is going to be a little bit more fragile um, in as much as you won't have as many rights in law. And um, also your privacy might be a bit compromised, especially if you're sharing common areas with a landlord. Um, another option for you might be that you've decided that after living in a, in a flat full of students you want to live alone next year um, uh, because you like your own space um, and uh, you don't like sharing bathrooms with people or, or kitchens and you don't like messy flatmates. Um, it also means that you probably will have a sole tenancy agreement which means that you don't have to sign um, jointly with someone and be tied to them for the year um, and, and also you might like not having to deal with all the emotional traumas of living with other people but it could become very expensive and also it, it might actually get lonely for you um, another option is sharing with people who aren't students um, the great thing about that is you can expand the circle of friends that you have in the city, um, so you're not just living in an all-student community, but it can be more expensive and there may be council tax liabilities for you. Uh, I would do research a lot, um, ask people, um, see what people's experiences are with different companies and yeah. places. The advice in terms of moving into private accommodation is shop around as much as possible. Do not go for the first property you find, because that's where a lot of stems from and speak to people who've been with the landlord the year before. In terms of governing bodies, get reviews from people that have been in the unit the year before so you can get an idea of you know, how well you're going to be treated by the governing body in question. The most, one of those common options of course is sharing with other students. Um, the pros to this is it's a lot cheaper and it can be lots of fun. Um, the cons are that you have to sign a joint contract and Catherine will be talking a little bit more about that. Um, you have to share things like bathrooms and kitchens, um, which can be interesting. Um, and you have to learn to compromise. And what started off as great friends can become enemies. students actually live and choose to stay across Lincoln so get accustomed to it um, I took you on a little walk so uh, we used, both used to live in a 12 bedroom house which was quite intense 
washing up never gets done. Um, the bin never got to count. The bins didn't get to count. Just little things like that didn't happen. Um, general drunken, noisy housemates have been in it before I am. So you've decided on who you want to live with and where you want to live. You need to think now about the contractual situation. When you sign a tenancy agreement, you are signing a legally binding document. And this document is binding for the duration of the fixed term, from the very beginning to the very end. So if you sign a contract in January, even though it doesn't start until July, you are bound from July until the end of that contract. This is one of the reasons why it's extremely important you consider who you're going to move in with, as well as many other things. Make sure you read your contract carefully. The content of the contract is usually very standard. However, if you don't read it, you don't know what your obligations are and you don't know what your rights are. Within the contract, there are rights and responsibilities. Most of you will sign an assured short-hold ten tenancy and most of them will be joint and several agreements, which actually means that you are all liable for all of the rent that needs to be paid. As a tenant, it is your responsibility to pay the rent when it's due, to take care of the property that you're living in and not to be a nuisance to the people you're living with or your neighbours. It is your right to stop other people entering your home, including the landlord, apart from very exceptional circumstances. If you find yourself in difficulties, you have the right to stay in that property until the landlord gets a court order for eviction. It is your right to have the landlord's address and if you don't have a copy of the tenancy agreement um, and you ask for one, you have a right to get one within 28 days of moving into the property. Just to make sure that you don't all bring a toaster because then there'll be like too many and it just gets out of hand. Well I think it's a good idea to have like a pre-idea in your head of how you're going to set out the cupboards and the fridge and everything so that everybody's got like a balance and nobody's like moving in like all oh, right what we're going to do i think you should go with your own idea bring it to the table and then make things a lot easier in terms of organization deposits are basically there to cover non-payment of rent and um, any damage that is done to the property when you pay a deposit for a short short hold tenancy to a private landlord or an agent it must, in law, be protected by a government-approved scheme. Check your tenancy agreement, and that's why we say read the tenancy agreement, because you must check your tenancy agreement and make sure that there's details in there about the scheme that the landlord's using to protect your deposit. Um, if it's not there, you, it is your legal right to ask for it in writing. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so um, don't, my advice to you, good people, is uh, don't get housemates that will pick up a sofa from West Parade. From a skip. From, from a skip, um, and then put it in your corridor, like right outside my I room. I think it's a good I opened idea my door in the morning, it. and there was a sofa there, and I think it had rats in it. And fleas. Like, like, was <laughs> yeah. That's a real horror. Yeah. That's a real horror story. And then obviously, you get the normal traffic cones. Traffic yeah. signs, traffic signs, Marks and Spencer's the trolley. trolley in the garden. Uh, when it comes to like shared accommodation, I think it's just be really respectful of, of the people you're sharing with. Um, you've, got to, you've got to consider other people rather than just thinking about yourself. Uh, well, I have damp in my room, but, yeah. <laughs> okay. which mum was really worried about because she thinks I'll get ill. Well, we had an incident once where the ceiling fell through and we were without the ceiling in the kitchen. The so landlord is obliged by law to keep in repair the outside and the structure of the property. This includes things like drains, gutters, external pipes. The landlord is also obliged to keep in repair and in proper working order the installations in the house for the supply of water, gas, electricity, sanitation, space heating and water heating. This includes things like basins, sinks, baths and toilets but it doesn't include things like fridges and cookers. Again, check your contract. If you believe 
that there has been a serious breach in the landlord's responsibilities and you have been unable to rectify this by yourself, then please seek advice as soon as possible. It is important to make sure that you pay rent because that's the tenant's responsibility. What we would say is come and get advice as soon as you can and we can advise you about your options of how to deal with these things. Um, we've had the ceiling falling through where um, every time we have a shower bits of the ceiling fall yeah. even more. Um, so there's a big gaping hole which we've reported and had nothing done about. You cannot get out of a contract of a tenancy agreement. The agreement must be properly assigned to somebody else and it must be with the agreement of both the landlord and the other tenants if applicable. Please seek advice if you have any problems with any of those. Hi guys, I hope everything you heard was helpful. So remember, contact me, Andrew Tugira, Welfare and Diversity Officer. My contact details are somewhere around here. So yeah, make sure you contact me if you have any sort of issues. And I hope everything you heard was useful. And remember, when it does come time to pick an accommodation or housing, remember, come back to this video, listen to your students, and make sure you listen. Take care. Oh. Any problems you have, because oh, usually... Gosh. Oh, sorry! <laughs> <laughs> I thought you looked at me. No. <laughs> anyway, we're that gonna, was... We're going to put that in. Yeah, it's alright, that's fine. We don't mind. Now take.